Hello, I'm Femi OK, and this is the Streams online pre-show. Think of it as a trailer for the main program. Today, we're going to be talking with two very special guests who chose to leave money, fame, and their careers as professional American football athletes in the name of Islam. Joining us in the studio, brothers Hamza and Hussein Abdullah. They're both a National Football League or NFL players. On Skype, Afwad Zaban, the head coach at Fulton High School football team. And with him is Mada Shukar. Mardi Shuka, he's a player on the team. And today we're doing things a little bit differently. Our digital producer, Omar Badar, is filling in for Malika and he's joining us from our Google Plus Hangout. And he's with a few community members, including Basil Tabidi, Hamza Syed, and Zubair Magdam, who all have questions for our guests. Now, in this pre-show, everybody gets a little time to just get an idea of what they're like. It's like setting the scene before the main conversation. So, Hamza and Hussein, social media show, what have you got ready? What, what are your tools that you're going to be out doing? Well, right now I have my iPad out, so I have my Twitter on my phone and I have Instagram and Facebook on my iPad. Do you think you can have a conversation and do that at the same time? Yes, ma'am. Multitasking is the name of the game. That's <laughs> right. Hussein, what are you doing? I just got my Twitter account ready, just if something pops up, respond to it. So you know that one of you is going to have to hold down the conversation while the other is doing the, the stuff? Yes, yep. ma'am. And your, and your Twitter feed, you're going to just let us know when people are tweeting stuff? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do it. Not just your mum saying, why are you two guys so <laughs> handsome, right? <laughs> All right. Dear Paul Michigan, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Wad, it's so great to see you. I watched your documentary. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Now, for people who haven't seen the documentary, Fordson, what do people need to know about you and where you're coming from? Just very briefly. Well, uh, all they need to know is that we're just average people that uh, follow our faith and we love the game of football and that's basically it. Mardi, what's your introduction going to be? If you could write your own introduction, what would you tell the world? Um, that I love the game of football, I love my religion, I have uh, faith in my religion and there's some stuff that you can't do because you want to you wanna have both of them in your life but uh, there's just some sacrifices you have to take. Beautiful. I think we're going to blow the world's mind today. I can't wait for that. So, in our Google Plus Hangout, we have a Boston posse. Everybody is from Boston. Let's start with Brazil. Brazil, um, what do we need to know about you? You're going to be asking some questions. I will be asking some questions. Um, where do I begin? It's one of those things where uh, they visited our local mosque uh, last year, I believe, during Ramadan. Nice. And, um, you know, it, it's it's great to have these type of role models in the community and really show people what uh, Islam is about. Okay, great. Nice introduction. Hamza, I've got two Hamzas in the house. Hello, <laughs> Hamza hey. Syed. Okay, quick introduction for you. Write your best introduction ever. As Basil was saying, um, the Abdullah brothers were at our mosque last year and I've uh, been following them ever since and it's just a good opportunity to get to know them. Wow. And, you know, hear from other American Muslims and their experience. Nice. And coincidentally, also in Boston, Mass, we have Zubair. Zubair, it's great that you're with us today in the stream. What do you think people should know about you that's kind of special and when you ask your question, they're going to be impressed? Um, you know, these two brothers represent something for our entire community um, that a lot of people haven't. So for us youth and for the rest of our community, we need to be looking up to these people. Uh, specifically to their sacrifices they've made for their religion <clears throat> and their family. So I think that's what we can take away from. Wow, I'm feeling the love for the Abdullah brothers. Although, I wonder if there's a little bit of jealousy because I put Omar in the Google Hangout today, not just because I have to have two amazing athletes at the table. <laughs> Omar, you're not, you're not mad with me, are you? Not too mad. Okay. I, mean, I figure you're sitting next to more handsome people, so it's a little understandable. It's not about that. It's just about the work, Omar. I just want to yeah. emphasize that. What are you planning to do? What do you think the community are going to do today? We have plenty of stuff coming in from the community and plenty of questions. Excellent. So Can't wait. It'll be interesting to get into. Can't wait to get started. That was your taster. It's going to get so much better in the main show. See you there in 30 seconds. I'm Femi OK and you're in the stream. Today, would you give up millions of dollars and a career in professional sports for the sake of your religion? 
we speak with two American athletes who did just that by choosing Islam over fame and money. Today we have two special guests joining us in the studio, brothers Hussein and Hamza Abdullah, both players in the US National Football League or NFL. They decided to walk away from millions, fame and America's favorite sport, all in the name of Islam. Hussein and Hamza, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you for having us. I did some research today. I did a lot of research for you guys. Uh -oh. I called up my black American former football player friend and he said they are rock stars. No, not rock nothing, stars, not right? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I'm looking to hear about your rock star stardom and how you're handling it. <laughs> I know you're, you're, tell me what you're going to be doing social media wise. Uh, social media, we have everything open. We have our Twitter feed. Our Twitter is at Abdullah Bros. Mm -hmm. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash Abdullah Brothers and our Instagram is Instagram at Abdullah Bros. Oh, they're good. They're going to be kept very busy. Do you mind if I tell your backstory? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right, here we go. So born in South Central Los Angeles, that's an area known for its violence, family, religion and football became their biggest motivators. And even after making it to the NFL, they remained devout Muslims, so fasting during the months of Ramadan, even with games and long training sessions. But last year, they decided to sit out a season so they could make the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca and take time off to better themselves as Muslims. So we'll be hearing about their year in just a little while. But first, I want to introduce our digital producer, the stream's very own Omar Badar, who is feeling, filling in for Malika Bilal, and he's in our Google Plus Hangout. Omar, it's good to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. Now, what's our community saying about the Abdullah brothers? Well, first of all, just because I'm far away from you for a change here, I decided to break stream etiquette and throw on a colorful tie just to make it easier for you to spot me Very in your nice. hangout split screen. Um, as far as the community is concerned, it's you know they have so many questions. They're very intrigued by the Abdullah brothers' story, uh, just about how they go about you know different practical things. We'll get to those questions a little bit later. But in the meantime, for those of you watching at home, we would like you to join the conversation. So be sure to tweet at us using the hashtag AJStream. Thanks, Omar. Also with Omar in the Hangout, a stream community members, Basil Tabidi, Hamza Syed, and Zubair Magdam. And they're standing by, ready to talk to the Abdallah brothers. Also in the conversation via Skype from Dearborn, Michigan, we have Fouad Zaban. He's the head football coach at Fordson High School. And with him, Mardi Shuka, a player on the team. And back in 2011, that team was the focus of the documentary Fordson Faith, Fasting and Football. The school boasts a 98% Arab population with many Muslims on the team. It's good to have everybody in the stream. We have, if we had two more people, we would actually have a football team. <laughs> it's really good to have all of you here. Let's start. Hamza. Yes, ma'am. When you first held a football, can you remember that feeling? I can't remember the first time I've held a football, but I remember the first time I was introduced to football. My older brother, Abbas, actually started the football family. And when I first saw football, I didn't want to play it. I was a basketball player, so oh, okay. I was very reluctant to play football at first. Hussein, when did you know you were any good? Like NFL good? Uh, NFL good? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that really didn't come until college. When I, when I worked with a, with a group of guys, and everybody just was successful. We pushed each other, we worked hard, and uh, you know, we, we always wanted for our brother what we wanted for ourselves, and we always pulled each other along, and we didn't let each other miss meetings, workouts, nothing. Yeah. And you know, a good group of us made it to the NFL. Wow, great, two brothers in the NFL, that's excellent. So Hamza, describe Hussein's playing style, critiquing, critique him as a player? Uh, critique him as a player. I think Hussein, uh, he doesn't get a lot of credibility that he deserves. He's a smart guy, so he puts guys in the right position. He's a big playmaker. He makes a lot of plays. So in football, the object of our job is to prevent the offense from scoring, and Hussein does that at a high level, and he actually takes the ball away. You can see the clip here. It's Hussein getting an interception, and that's the best thing that you can play. Yes, that's the best thing you can do as a <laughs> defensive back, and wow. Hussein does that a lot. He's fast. Yes, he is. Cool. Uh, Hussein, describe Hamza's playing style. Hamza's, uh, he's reckless. He, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, he's, he's a big guy and he, he, he throws his body around. So if you're a receiver or a running back and as soon as you think you're, you're about to get away, here comes 6'2", 220, <laughs> full of muscle just come to knock somebody out. Whoa, okay, I'm scared already. <laughs> um, so you've, you, ha you both had this great career um, and you were doing really well in the NFL 
and then you did a YouTube video to tell your fans something kind of major. I'm just going to play it for you. Yes, ma'am. All, right. All right, just check this out, everybody. Ever since I was young, I had a vision. A vision of becoming someone great. A dream. A dream filled with passion. <coughs> but it wasn't easy trying to fulfill my dream. My dream of playing in the NFL. With my childhood dream fulfilled, I came to realize one thing. We've got a bigger dream to pursue. Wow, I'm inspired. You guys took a year off. There were so many questions about this year off. Yes, Omar Butler, you've got some of those questions far away. Indeed, if you take a look at my screen over here, Rufus Jenny asks, has a question for the Abdullah brothers, says, what is the most frequently asked question you get about your decision to leave the NFL for Hutch? The number one question we get is, do you miss it? And as a football player, we, we're always around our brothers or our teammates all the time. We're around our teammates more than we are our family sometimes. So you miss the camaraderie. You miss being on the field. You know, the adulation of standing in front of 60,000, you know, that kind of comes and goes. But just being around the brothers and the fellowship, I think we miss that the most. Wow. And Zubair, who's in our Google Hangout, Zubair, I know you had a, a follow-up question about the Hajj and the impact. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the last time I spoke with Hussein, he was uh, in between after he came back from Hajj. So I just wanted to ask you guys, how, how did the pilgrimage play effect in your lives and how is the transition going back into football for you specifically, Hussein? Um, it was, you know, Hajj was, it put life into perspective. It was, you know, just something so beautiful that you really can't put in words. There's so many different experiences and stories and being there with your brothers, being there with your parents, um, taking my wife there. It was just something that was, you know, really just put life into perspective, seeing all the different people from all over the world um, coming together for the same purpose, uh, to worship God, seek forgiveness, ask for guidance, same thing. And for me, going back into the NFL lifestyle, it's almost like you can see stuff that guys are doing and you're like, man, some of those pitfalls are the ones that used to, you know, used to attract me or something that was alluring to me. And, you know, you try, you try to talk to guys and help them where you can, but you kind of look at things, you look at life completely different now. See, when I ever watched the Hajj, on TV every year, I never get bored. <laughs> it's so stunning. Yes, and I have fam family who are Muslims and I'm just jealous because I can never be part of that and I, I just have to stand back and watch it. Um, a, a lot of our, our community were also really curious about, let's say the culture of football. You kind of touched upon it. I'm not gonna stereotype it. Mm -hmm. Hamza, you just, just be real about yes, that culture of football and then how you, you deal with it. Well, it's not just the culture of football, it's American society uh, in general. You know, just watching the game last night, we were watching game three of the NBA Finals, and you have alcohol, you, you're selling sex, and you have uh, these all of these different things that, you know, are pitfalls to our society. So, obviously, when you're in the National Football League, you're a professional athlete, you're going to be exposed to these things at a higher volume, but it's up to us as, as men, as, as brothers, to protect each other because it's not easy and you can't do it alone. You always need someone there with you. So you're a babe magnet, basically? Yes, ma'am. Wow. Fouad, you should know about being a babe magnet. You played football <laughs> and you've got a whole team to look after. Um, how do you navigate this? It's really tough, right? Well, um, yeah, somewhat it is tough, but honestly, it's just uh, an extension to the family, to my immediate family, and uh, I, I look at all these kids as uh, as my kids, and, and you know, they're from within the community that I grew up in, and and uh, what better way to be able to um, deliver the correct message, you know, uh, other than you know, football. For me, as a coach, I have uh, such a big influence as a coach then this way is the way that for me I can deliver the message that I want to deliver. But uh, I, I mean, in, in respect to Brother Hamza and, and Brother Hussein, 
I mean, that's that's remarkable. I mean, that just shows you the, the dedication, the love, and the passion that they have for Islam and, and for their faith. And that that's uh, totally a credit to them and especially their family, their, their parents. What's sitting next to you is Mahdi. He's one of your football players. Mahdi, what do you want to ask the brothers? Um, I wanted to ask them um, uh, one question about their year off was, do you guys feel like you guys uh, got held back? Like, did you guys used to, uh, were you guys not as good? Or do you guys still have that intensity you guys played with before? Like, do you guys, do you lift or? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we get what we get. What you're trying to say. Um, during during the whole time off, we worked out. Um, you know, we always worked out. But there's nothing like actually getting out there and playing football. And you know, when I went back with the with the Kansas City Chiefs, it took it took me a, it took me a while. It was you know I was. I was out there doing stuff, but it's a lot different when a guy is running full speed at you, making all these moves, and you have to react. Or the offense come out and they're making all these adjustments, and you kind of have to go back to thinking. In football, everything is X's and O's, uh, moving pieces and moving parts. Everything is strategy. So it took a while, but um, as OTAs progress and as mini camps progress, I was able to start to get more comfortable and start to get the feel back. You know what? I, I kind of felt like Mighty wanted to know like your work your workout regime. I think he was like digging a little deeper. So like, how, how do you do it? How do you get back into shape? You know, it's it's one of those things where to go somewhere you've never been, you have to do things you've never done. And we had a very strict regimen as far as we did speed work with a guy uh, by the name of Sean Crawford, an Olympic gold medalist in, uh, in L.A. We did strength with Travel Gaines over at Gaines Athletics in West Hollywood. Then we did skill with Jason David at Stars in Anaheim. So... And we did that, you know, pretty much every day, at least two a day every day. And, you know, it, it's just to strive to be great. And, you know, as a professional athlete, you have to continue to, you know, set, set bars and you have to jump over them. Omar, I hear your tie talking. <laughs> Indeed. Go for we it. actually have a couple of critical tweets in. Uh, we have, this is Palestine here on my screen saying, why would you need to take a whole season off? Going to Mecca doesn't take that long. And we have another comment on Facebook from Shuja who says, I'm a Muslim and I strongly disagree with what they've done. Your faith and your passion are not mutually exclusive. So the question is, why did you feel it was important to take time off in order for you to fulfill your faithful obligations? It was, it was something, that, uh, something that I was going through internally. It didn't have anything to do with anybody else. It was something that I felt I was at a position in life where I needed further guidance and the only place to get it was in Mecca. So we went and we went for Umar in March. And when we went out there, we had such a feeling that we're like, we want to go back for Hajj. We've always sat back. We've always looked at all the pictures. We've always heard all the stories. And we're like, we want to go for Hajj. And, you know, it was, it was just something that we did. And uh, he's right. It doesn't take an entire season to go fraud, it takes about three and a half weeks. But the fact of the matter is, in the NFL, it's a very competitive business and guys are hired and fired on the daily. So when we came back, yes, we were still working out, we we're still trying to get back in, but the fact of the matter is, we didn't get signed. And it wasn't until this off season when I got signed, so. And another thing is, this was the first year where Hussein or Hussein and myself were uh, free agents. And the reason we did not go before was because we were bound by contracts. And in Islam, you have to honor your contracts. So we, this was the first time in our NFL careers that we were both free agents at the same time, going through s similar things as far as uh, every offseason we would go back to Los Angeles and we would work out. But there were so many different circumstances that didn't allow that. Uh, my wife, she was very sick, so I had to stay in Arizona. Hussein had some things going on, so he had to stay in Minnesota. And there were just all these different things and different signs that just they continued to point to something. And what we realized was it was something inside of us that we needed to do, and we need to do something for the sake of God. People just still watch and go, really? But right in the middle of like their best time ever? But I think you explain it as best as you can. You, you, it has to be right for you. Oh, yes, ma'am. Fouad, I saw your mouth moving. I didn't hear the words. Go for it. Um, what I was saying, I was going back to, the, uh, to what the brothers did uh, during the off-season or to get ready to get picked up again. Basically, it's dedication. And since I have Mehdi here and I'm his coach, I want him to understand that you need to be dedicated to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish, not only on the football field, but in life. If you want to be a devout very 
devout Muslim, you have to make sacrifices and you have to be dedicated to that part of life as well. So, uh, the, you know, the football field, the classroom, um, and life in general, your faith, you have to have that dedication and that hard work to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. We have more than one Hamza in the house. We have Hamza Saeed. Hamza, what's your question for Hamza and Hussein? Unmute yourself, Hamza, so we can hear you. <laughs> Looking good, though. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so my question was, um, you know, how do you guys find? How did you guys find that balance between, you know, expressing your faith and, you know, being in the NFL when you have people like Tim Tebow who show the expression of their faith with every touchdown? Um, you guys choose not to do that. So how do you guys approach um, your faith in the NFL? and um, how is that viewed by your teammates, by your fans, by your coaches, when you choose not to partake in that culture of the NFL well, I, that you I, had talked about? I, I, first and foremost, I, I like Tim Tebow, and Tim Tebow is a man, he is who he is. You know, he, he, he is a Christian man, he's a stand-up guy, he's a man in the locker room where when you've been around people who have been in the locker room with him, he's a guy that they want on their team, and he's a star competitor. and. What I take from Tim Tebow is he's just praising God, you know, however which way God allowed him to score that touchdown. Some people think, you know, God doesn't have a hand in what you do on a football field. That may be true, but every single thing that we do, we have to give thanks to God. You know, we're, we're created for a purpose, and the purpose is to serve and worship God. And we might not kneel down or do anything like that, but you better believe we're saying a prayer. And everything that we do, we try and say a prayer. We begin everything with Bismillah or in the name of God, and we end everything with Alhamdulillah or all praises are due to God. So this is what you're saying publicly. Just just before us in the, in the pre-show, I was talking to our Boston posse on the hangout. I was like, are you happy you just signed Tim Tebow for the New England Patriots? What, what, were, they t what were you guys talking about? Well, you know, they, uh, they said we need someone to bring them water. And <laughs> I'll be honest okay, with you. Okay, that's trash think, talk. Who, yeah, who's that, that, who's that who laughing that? in the hangout? Who was yeah. that? Uh, that was me. Yeah, go who, on. Who was me? You have to state yeah. your name and your Twitter yeah. handle so yes. that we can right. get to you. <laughs> you started a fight. Well, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a Twitter handle. Oh, that that's I, a cop out. That mm -hmm. I use. <laughs> um, but I'll find you guys. You guys will find that out. That sounds good. But I, I wanted to ask you guys, um, you know, I know you guys uh, got married relatively early. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you think that, what kind of advice would you give to some like, you know, the Boston Posse as an example? <laughs> about like how important it was for you or maybe not so important to get married at a younger age and how that's affected you um, in your professional careers. Okay. I've got, I got married when I was 20 years old. Oh, uh, baby. <laughs> yeah, wow. still, still, still learning, I'm still rough around the edges. But it, it was something that it was, you know, it was, it was a growing experience. And I definitely, I seen what goes on in locker rooms and with, with the football culture and I knew that would be detrimental to myself. So, you know, I stayed away from it. I was able to, uh, you know, find my wife, was able to get married, and we was able to grow together. And then it just makes it so much easier because peer pressure is real and peer pressure is serious. And it's so much easier for me to just say, I'm gonna I'm go home, I'm gonna hang out. If you guys would like to come hang out, you can come hang out at the house, we can, we can do whatever. And then when you guys wanna do what you wanna do, you guys can take that somewhere else. It makes it so much easier and sure. it really does help you grow and that's why, you know, in Islam getting married is half your dean because that other person is gonna help you grow. See, I'm not being fresh here, Hamza, but what's your Facebook status? My Facebook status right now, I believe it says we're here at the stream. Okay. And, and it just has a picture up right now. That's nice. I mean, your Facebook relationship status. Oh, uh, we are both married. <laughs> <laughs> right? yes, Everybody else got it. Yes, yes. We, <laughs> we're in the we're stream. Thank you very much for that. Omar is also in the stream. Go for yeah, it. We have actually a video comment here from uh, Derek Holman, who is a player with Fortson. Uh, take a listen to what he has to say. Hi, my name is Derek Coleman. I go to Fort High School. Me playing on a team was special with a lot of Muslims. There's really no difference from any other team, except sometimes we deal with people's stupid comments. But it really doesn't hurt us as a team. It just brings us even closer together as one. Uh, me on the team as a non-Muslim, it doesn't really like affect me in any way. I'm still invited to people's houses. Um, I fast with them. We um say the prayer together before our games. So I really don't feel like left out or anything. 
So my question uh, to the Abdullah brothers, have you ever dealt with any kind of prejudice and how does your team react to it? Do you feel like they come together for you in situations like this? Well, number one, I'd say our team, when you're on the field with these guys for such a long time, you know, you grow a, you grow a bond and you have to be able to trust the brother next to you. And as far as uh, the, the ignorance or the stupidity and the comments and things like that, there's a verse in the, Quran, in the Holy Quran, it's chapter uh, 25, verse 63, and it says, uh, in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, and the servants of Allah, most gracious are those who walk on the earth in humility, and when the ignorant address them, they say peace. Did you just pull that out just then? Well, how, I, how did you have that ready? Well, I always, that's something that comes up in almost every interview. So right. it, it's just something that you're you going to be faced with. You have it standing by <laughs> well, yeah, just because in you're going to be faced with that. And as a Muslim, you're always taught to just say peace. Islam the, it comes from the root word salam, which means peace. So we're always taught to always peace, peace, peace. All right. So. Hussein, Kansas City Chiefs. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you about your coach in a little while. Okay. It's a new coach, yep. so that's really intriguing. Um, but Hamza, you're not signed. No, ma'am. And this is why we had so many questions at the beginning about why did you take a whole year yeah. off? Yeah. Do, are you inside feeling like gulp? What if you're done? If, if I'm done, then that's this is all the will of God. And you know, I w going back, people ask me all the time, "Do you regret the decision?" No, I don't, because it has opened my eyes to the reality of life and the reality of football and how much I miss it, how much I love football. I wake up every morning at five o'clock, I go pray and I go work out. After I work out, I get lunch and I go work out again just because I miss the game so much. I watch football all the time. I watch Hussein. I talk with Hussein. I talk with football players just because I want to be around the game so much. So I know I still have a lot to give. I'm only 29 years old. I played seven years. I'd like to go back and play another seven years, God willing. But another seven years? That's old in football. <laughs> no, no. I, oh, you're an old man. Well, I came into the league with uh, John Lynch was my mentor. He played 15 years. Chan Bailey with the Denver Broncos. Oh. He's approaching his 15th year. So that's kind of the standard. Okay. All right, Zubair, if you're quick, go for your question. Uh, I just wanted to ask, like uh, the Fortson coach was talking about your dedication to uh, becoming uh, you know, the best at what you do in terms of on and off the field. Uh, a lot of a part, a huge part of that is sacrifice, and I know you guys made such a large sacrifice. As you often see, could you just speak more to that and the role that sacrifice plays plays in a Muslim's life? Okay, sacrifice, but pretty quickly because um, we're heading to overtime. <laughs> okay, there's a sacrifice. You know what we did last year? We sacrificed the most notable, most noticeable thing was. Uh, the NFL, that was the most noticeable thing, but when you sacrifice something, you're doing it for a purpose and you're doing it for a reason. And when you're doing something for the sake of God, it makes other things seem very minute, like real small. So it was a sacrifice, but it was probably the best one we've ever done in life and the most enjoyable one. So, you're on social media all the way through this interview. All the way, yes, You are multitasking I have to. Time. I have to. I'm going to ask you what you got there, what are people asking you, well, what's going on. I just got a fantastic tweet from Rahma Danraka. Uh, her name is at uh, Rah Rahmer, or at R-A-H-H-M-E-R, -E and she just said, you did a great job, Abdullah, bro, so I just want to say peace and love and thank you. Oh, that's lovely. This is a great point to say this conversation is going to continue, not just in a normal post show, but an extra long post show. So if you want to talk to the Abdallah brothers, tweet us at AJStream. Now, what are we doing on Thursday's show? Are social networking sites responsible when cyberbullying turns deadly? A really important conversation, and we'll be having that on the next AJ Stream. In the meantime, the American Football Talk continues at stream.aljazeera.com. You know where to find us. We'll be online. Thanks for watching.
we have supersized the post show at stream.aljazeera.com. Welcome back. We're going to have even more time with Hamza and Hussein Abdullah. They're two brothers who are professional athletes in the US National Football League or the NFL to most of us here in the States. And we're going to talk to them about their faith, about football, about future. Ha! <laughs> Do you mind being the poster boys of black Muslim America? Are you okay with that? I don't know if we, ne if ne we necessarily are. I, I think we are just humble servants of God trying to do our best to uh, go about you know the things that we do you know we're husbands we're fathers we're sons we're brothers we're teammates and we're just trying to put forth our best effort to do good. You have 10 siblings like there's two of you and then a 10. Yep. <laughs> do you know all of their names? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I was just asked this question a few days ago. That's a lot, right? Yeah. No, but see, the question is, do we know all their birthdays? That's where it gets ah. tough. Yes, ma'am. No, there's no way. I kind of, I, I do. I, you know, there's a, there's an app on my phone that alerts me to when I have a brother. <laughs> what do you call it, the Abdallah family app? Pretty much. <laughs> Zubair, you asked a question, and I know also you wanted the coach, Fouad, to answer that question as well. Can you just remind us what the question was? Uh, the question was about sacrifice, and I wanted both uh, Hamza and Hussein to talk about their sacrifices and what it means in an Islamic way, but also for the Fortson coach to talk about um, maybe his activities off the field that he does with his players for faith building and community building so that the youth of, that are watching this get a broader sense of what they can do and how they can live their life. That's a good question. So part one of it we handled, part two, Fouad. Um, great question. Uh, first of all, honestly, in a public school, it's, uh, that's something you have to separate church and state. So if you're talking about from a religious aspect, it's very hard to discuss religion with uh, the players because of, of, of that. Um, now, do we fast? Yes, we fast. I fast. My, uh, our players fast. And we've done multiple things uh, where we've done you know, uh, different things for practice because of that. I mean, we've had food for them. We've had uh, suhoor for them. Um, so we've done different things on that level. Um, now, things that we do, we have community service projects within the community. Um, and and it, doesn't, it does not matter if it's a, a, a Muslim-based, uh, um, um, I'm sorry. I lost my train of, uh, train of thought. It, yeah, but I, I anyways, blame like Mardi because he was like agreeing with you. Something that we've uh, done community service for. Right. Um, Habitat for Humanity is something we've done our uh, you know community service for. So we do these types of things. Um, you know, clean up uh, parks. Mardi, you said something really important when we were chatting earlier, which was about just being a regular American. But there are just certain things that you have to kind of add to the mix as a a Muslim Arab American. Can you enlarge on that? Um, honestly, uh, what I wanted to say was like, uh, there's stuff like your teenage life that you can't do because, or well, you can't just like, you, yeah, you really can't do because uh, you decide to play football and practice your religion and go to school. That takes up most of your time for your other teenage uh, life that other people do without having school religion or football so I know it's a sacrifice you've made since you were eight years old you know that your summer's been cut short months like uh, ever since playing that's just some sacrifices you uh, you give up right Hussein you're showing Hamza something and you both laughed yes. <laughs> share it with us uh, I can't remember uh, Sister Rahma yeah Sister Rahma who Hamza <laughs> called her name she tweeted again and said oh my god Al Jazeera just mentioned my name I'm dancing right now <laughs> okay that's a third time yeah. <laughs> yeah. now she's freaking out completely <laughs> Omar how's the community yeah. looking right now it's looking great. We have another question here from Hawa Yusuf, if you look at my screen, asking about the balance between career and faith. Uh, she asks, have you ever felt pressured by coaches or managers to focus more on the game and practice rather than religious obligations? Have you ever experienced this kind of dilemma? Yeah, especially in, you, in the first thing that pops up in my head is during Ramadan, because we fast during the month of Ramadan. And they, they see you fasting and, you know, you're abstaining from... Uh, food, you're abstaining from drink, which is probably the most crucial one when you're going through a two-a-day practice during training camp. And they kind of start to question and look at things differently. But, you know, alhamdulillah, one thing for us is we've never, uh, we've never asked for special treatment. And when everybody else works out, we work out. 
We never asked to be taken out of the game because of we're fasting and we push through and we're still able to go out there and produce. And I've actually had some of my, throughout my career, high school, college, and in the NFL, some of my best games during the month of Ramadan. So there is the pressure, but I mean, hey, you just gotta, li you gotta live up to it. I'd like to go back to something that the brother was talking about. Uh, I can't remember who said it, but he was talking about his teenage life. Uh, if you ask me, how many friends do I have from high school? I have one friend from high school that has been with me throughout everything. You know, sometimes you see guys and they're having fun. Maybe they're staying out late, they're partying, and you feel like, hey, I want to do that. I want to do those things. Well, now, 10 years later, I've been out of high school 13 years, and I look back, and those guys are still doing the exact same thing they were doing in high school. And here we are. We are family men. We're brothers. You know, we're people that God willing, people can lean on us and, and, and talk to us, and we can be honest and be trusted. So sometimes, you know, we see things that we want, but it's not something that we need. So there's going to be some sacrifice. We have the hashtag Team Faja, and people have asked us about, you know, what's Team Faja? Well, Faja is the early morning prayer, and everyone knows the sacrifice. You have to sacrifice sleep to wake up for that early morning prayer, but the reward of making that prayer is immense. So it's, there's going to be sacrifice in your life, and if it's easy, everyone would do it. So... Let's break this down. You see something you want, but you don't need. Give me an example. Uh, let's say, for example, you know, there's a guy who he drops out of high school because he's making eight dollars an hour. So that's really good money when you're in high school. But if you drop out of high school, he is going to be pigeonholed in that job for the next 10 years. And you say, well, you know what? I don't have any money right now in high school, but I'm working towards my education that God will and it will pay off later. Do you mind if I revisit Ramadan? Yes, Coming up around about July the 8th, depending yes, on where in the world you observe it, I have to say that my colleagues in Doha, Ramadan is not the most productive couple of weeks because from sun up to sundown they can't eat, they yes, can't drink, yes, they're in a really, really uncomfortable climate. Yes. We try and get work done before Ramadan <laughs> because nothing's going to really happen. Nothing. Nothing. And, and then your training, I, break it down for us. How, how do you even do that? It's very difficult, especially when I was in Arizona and you're facing some of those triple digit temperatures, 112, 113, 114. But you just have to know your body. <laughs> Say that again. 112, 112 113. 113, 114. Wow, that's like Doha. It, it's just like Doha. But the thing about it is you have to be smart. You know, we're not out there to try and be tough guys. You know, God has placed on us, God does not place on us a burden greater than we can bear. So, you know, we're not out there trying to run as fast as we possibly can during the 112, 113 degrees. You know, we're trying to do whatever our job recalls and we understand that we work with some of the best doctors, trainers, coaches, and we tell them, you know, this is what we're going through and if you can help us, please help us. Hamza Saeed, you have a question. I do. I wanted to know more about your guys' 30 for 30 project and what prompted that, whether, you know, it was misconceptions that you were coming across about Islam or, you know, you just wanted to get to know more about the American Muslim community at large all throughout the states. Um, that's something that none of us, neither of us really take credit for it. I don't know how it came about, but we decided, uh, along with our brother Boss, to hop in a minivan and drive across America and just meet people and you know talk to the youth and you know we've been blessed with this platform and we just want to have a positive impact on different people in different places and we just think about it when we were younger if an NFL player was coming that was Muslim coming to talk to us we'd be the first ones in line so we just took the opportunity to go and just try to give a good word. Yeah. Hamza you're laughing I, behind that laugh I feel that there's some Story so or many adventure stories. or there, misadventure. I, I think Share you, one. Well, I will say one. Uh, we were crossing over. I believe we we're coming from Nebraska. Or we're, no, we were going into Iowa, I believe. And there was a sign that said speed limit. I believe it was 65 or 70. And as I was going, uh, there were some cones up. So I was driving, and, and right, right, I mean, right before the phone, the the cones, there's another speed limit sign that says 50. So a 20 mile per hour drop, and right by the sign is a police officer. Of course. Know? And of course, and you know, as <laughs> soon as I switched, because I just got in the driver's side, we had a rotation going on. So as soon as I get in, of course, we get pulled over by the cops, and he asks us, of course, where we're doing, and he's like, okay, well, you guys are driving around the country in a minivan talking to kids. I don't believe that. And he's like, no, seriously. We're, we both are NFL players, so, you know, all praise due to God, we didn't get a ticket. He just told <laughs> us to slow down and get there safe. Wow, I was lucky. Um, one of my friends, 
he used to play football, he's Muslim, he's black, he kind of helped me do my prep for this. He said, do you feel that compulsion to support every part of the Muslim community and every cause because you have such a high profile? Um, as a Muslim, you support everybody. Exactly. If they're, if they're a Muslim, you support everybody. There's no, I'm African-American, so I'm only going to, you know, roll with African-Americans or I'm from Syria or Palestine. If when you're a Muslim, you support everybody. And, you know, it, it just goes back to some of the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad, peace, peace be upon him, him, who said, you know, if there is one part of the body infected, we're all in trouble. Yeah. So for us, it's like, you know, when, and I'm not a person who's a politician or I know every single thing that's going on. But, you know, we do like to support everybody and every cause because we are Muslims. And if someone else is a Muslim, you're on our, you're on our team. I want to ask you a really personal question. Is that okay? That's okay. All right. So in the Muslim faith, you don't believe in interest. But your careers, by the time you're sort of 13, mid-30s, you're done as your football playing yes, careers. So it's kind of smart to save. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. What do you do? How do you, how do you, I don't want to say get around that, but how do you manage it's, that? It's, it's funny because I actually was just talking to my financial advisor earlier today. And he told me, he said, Hamza, you're, you're paying me to do nothing because I can't do this, I can't do that because everything deals with interest. And I told him, you know, I'm paying you so that I don't spend all of my money. But it is one of those things there as a, as a Muslim, uh, there are certain things that we can do, there are certain things we can't. So we have to find those, uh, what is called halal investments or uh, basically investments that we can partake in. And, you know, right now we're obviously exploring some of these diff different business opportunities, but it's just about being smart and trying to do uh, what, what's right and for the sake of God. All right, good luck with that. Omar. On a related note, actually, if you take another look at my screen, Muslim Malima gives the example of a cricket star, Hashem Amla, uh, who's, uh, who doesn't wear alcoholic sponsor on his clothing. And I'm just curious, um, have you ever had to deal with any, any some, something similar where you, there was a conflict between your faith and something yet, that you would have ordinarily done in the sport that you chose not to? No, I would say for me, nothing, nothing like that, because in the National Football League, you know, we don't have all the sponsors that they have uh, in other sports. Like you see the WNBA now, they have all these sponsors. The NFL doesn't have that. But, you know, that, like I said, I commend the brother for standing up for what he believes, and I commend anyone who stands up for what they believe in. You know, I don't think he was doing it so that he can get publicity or get patted on his back. He just did something that he believed was right. How's Andy, your coach at Kansas? He's I'm cool. Just, he's yeah. cool. He's uh, he's real. He's did real he, did chill. Did he bring you on? Yeah, he, and he he's he's real chill, and he's he's one of those coaches that, I mean, you're a grown man, you're a professional, so I'm just gonna tell you what what needs to be done, tell you what I expect, and then go do your job. He's not one of those people who are all on top of you or who's gonna micromanage everything. He really lets you be a professional. He's chill. All right. We're just wrapping up this show. Uh -oh. oh, we're out of it's overtime over even. Almost. What have you got in social media that we, we should just have a quick peek at? Uh, let's anything, see. Anything we new? have we have brother Abu Bakr Abbas uh, at Abu Scorpio. He says, you guys did great on AJ Stream. Highly inspirational. May Allah reward you. And mm -hmm. we say Jazakallah Khair. Uh, may Allah reward you as well. Thank you very much. Oh, that's great. How are we doing on our social media? You've got a closing thought, Omar. Uh, indeed, we basically there is you know still some level of debate on l different levels of approval. But I think um, if you look at look at my screen, uh, Nestle Han closes it pretty well, saying that it doesn't you know it doesn't matter what the consequences of their talking is. Uh, high profile Muslims may take the opportunity to be heard, whether it proves productive or counterproductive. Just do your thing, and then let people just decide whatever they want to decide. I'm really sad that we've got to stop talking to you. I'd keep you here for three hours if I could. <laughs> Thank you very much Thank to you. Hamza and Hussein Abdullah. They're NFL players. Fouad Zaban, he's from Fordson High School. He's their head football coach. And with him is Mahdi Shukar. He's a player on the team. And at Google Hangout, we have Basil Tabidi, Hamza Sayed, and Zubair Magdaman. Thank you, community, for being part of this stream. Meanwhile, on the next edition, social networking sites, are they responsible when cyberbullying turns deadly? That's a conversation for another day. In the meantime, you know where to find us, stream.adazira.com, maybe online. Thanks for watching.